And in this awakened mind pattern, you have your, both your left and your right hemisphere acting together. You have access to the unconscious radar intuition of the delta waves, the subconscious spiritual connection, creative inspiration of the theta waves, the bridging capacity and the relaxed, detached awareness of the alpha waves, and the ability to consciously process thought all at the same time. And this is a pattern that we have seen repeatedly in people with, quote, higher states of consciousness. Now, interestingly, I, I was with him in London from 1973 to 1981. And I returned back to this country in 1981 and started bringing this material into the uh, creative arts and the professional worlds instead of just staying within the spiritual realms that he did his original research in. And I have found this pattern repeatedly in peak experience. So it is the pattern also of peak productivity and peak experience. I've seen it in the, the choreographer at the moment of choreography and in the composer sitting at the piano doing the, the composition. And I have seen it in the uh, CEO in the boardroom. I've also acted for a while as a, as a management consultant and worked some, with some very large corporations, both as a, um, in an executive development capacity and in an executive search capacity, doing head hunting with a head machine. <laughs> was quite a, quite a um, twist to my uh, spiritual occupation. <laughs> um, I had the interesting good fortune to do the retreat uh, once for the YPO um, club, the Young Presidents Organization. And to be a member of this club, you have to be under 40, the president of your own company, and uh, gross five million a year and have 50 employees. So this is a fairly select group of, I must say men, because they were all men. Um, and I measured 25 of these young, bright executives. And you know, it was really interesting the number of near awakened minds there were. Not there, but nearly. The, the biggest problem that they had was in the beta waves, where the beta waves came out here instead of curving back in. Notice we don't have those higher frequencies beta in the awakened mind pattern. That's your chatter. That's your, your anxiety that almost everybody is producing almost all of the time. And in a true awakened mind pattern, we do not carry that, um, that frequency around with us. There is one more pattern I think I'd like to talk about before we move on to some other things. Um, what happens when the yogi or the swami who lives in this state? Now, there's a lot of us who are aspiring to get into this state, maybe even several times a day when we meditate or when we go into our, our, the creative aspect of ourselves. But the, these yogis and swamis that we measured live in this state. They stay in this state. What happens when they sit down to go into a higher state of consciousness? Where do they go from here? And there is a pattern that we have measured. I haven't seen it that many times. I haven't had the good fortune to, but I've seen it enough times to know that it's there. And it looks like this. And it really is the pattern of unity. There is no differentiation. Now, if you look at our spiritual traditions, in almost all spiritual traditions, there is a basis for evolution or for awakening where the unconscious mind becomes conscious. That's the rebirth. That's the, the enlightenment that occurs in spiritual traditions. If you can see in this pattern, there is no longer any unconscious. The unconscious is conscious. The delta, the content down here in the delta waves has merged with the content throughout the whole of the mind up to the beta waves. So these are the sort of people that go to sleep, but if you were to come into their room while they were <coughs> sleeping without opening their eyes, they would tell you the next morning what, they, what you were wearing and when you came in and what you did in there. 
because there is no unconscious mind in these people. Um, okay, so those are the patterns that we're looking at. Now, I work, what I do, let me talk a little bit about how, how I work with this. Essentially, what I, I work with the mind mirror, and I take a brainwave profile of someone who comes into my office, and this profile creates kind of what I call a signature pattern, which is what is your brainwave pattern over a given period of time with a given number of activities that we're doing. And what I do basically is train people to go from where they are in their baseline pattern closer to where they want to be, closer towards this awakened mind state. And I use a large variety of means and techniques for doing this training. Um, my own voice and guided meditation is probably the makes up the majority of my practice. I take people into different meditations. But there are specific words, phrases, images, meditations, breathing exercises, eye movements, body positions, all sorts of things that will affect individual frequencies. So what I would do is look at a brainwave pattern and say, what, what's your key frequency that needs to be affected first? And if we look at the, the four different possible changes that we might do, um, we might want to learn to reduce. Usually people need to learn to reduce beta. Occasionally not. Occasionally in some of the, um, I, I quote, learning disabled children, people that I work with, with in that state, uh, they need to increase the beta. But generally people are working with reducing beta waves, reducing the, um, what is it, the thousand monkeys or the squirming of the worm in the brain, Patanjali called it. It's a terrible description, but it really fits for that, that anxiety thought that goes on. Um, people need to increase alpha waves and increase theta waves and increase or decrease de delta waves. We do have a problem sometimes with some people, some of you might relate to this, oversensitive people who have vast amounts of delta waves are like a radar generator and are therefore picking up other people's thoughts. And, and this person over here is feeling some pain of some sort, some emotional pain, and all of a sudden our high delta sensitive is feeling upset. And this can explain for a lot of people um, why they have certain experiences. So a lot of what I do is educating people about themselves and how they operate. Um, let me show you a couple of more patterns. One that <coughs> works up, interestingly enough, quite frequently in my practice uh, is the case of the hidden content. I work with consciousness in two ways. We can look at consciousness in two ways. State of consciousness and content of consciousness. The state of consciousness is this brainwave pattern. The state of consciousness is the state that your mind is in regardless of the material of the mind. The content of consciousness is the thoughts, feelings, emotions, experience, attitudes, the material of the mind. In a psychotherapeutic way, you can actually watch content being hidden while the mind in all of its wonderful cunningness shifts it around so that the client um, doesn't have to reveal it to himself or to me. So there'll be some patterns that will be a red flag for me that this individual needs to work with content. And that type of pattern might be that they would have a pattern similar to this. The amount of beta waves we would, I'm not going to talk about. That would mean something, but I won't go into it. They'd go from that pattern when I try to develop theta here into that pattern. In other words, they will do everything possible in their mind to avoid the alpha and the theta there at the same time. Because what would happen if they had the alpha and the theta there at the same time? The bridge would be made and they would know what is there. 
And so when we're working um, in trying to retrieve perhaps early memories of abuse, something like that, we need to look at the content and how content gets shoved around between the different frequencies. When we're trying to work with a specific frequency in order to develop an optimum brainwave pattern, it's very, very useful to have a profile and a signature pattern to know what your specific frequencies are that you need. Um, this pattern, for example, is not an awakened mind pattern. Can anyone guess why this is not an awakened mind pattern? That one right there. Actually, I've just pointed to the reason why it's not an awakened <laughs> mind pattern. <laughs> it's got what we call a bottleneck. Can you see that there is too much distance between the theta and the alpha? So whatever content is lodged in the theta is still not going to get up, even though the alpha is there. And this might be 12.5 hertz, and this might be 4 hertz. So those are both within our alpha and our theta designated categories of what alpha and theta are. Now what we would need to do is look at the specific patterns and the way this individual's brain operates to know, is it better to raise their theta frequency or lower their alpha frequency? And that depends on the actions and the, the way that the specific individual's brain waves operate, and it also depends on the actions of their beta waves and how they interplay with that and interact with that. I'm curious if there's a, if you can give a simplistic uh, paradigm for what generates these certain frequencies. Okay, your, your brain is producing electrical firings all of the time. This is very simplistic. I'm not going to go into the biology of it because we don't have that length of time. Um, they come out in different frequencies. If you were to look at a, a, medical, a medical model brainwave thing like that, we're doing cycles per second, and you would measure a second here and you'd count the number of cycles in that second. What we're, this is happening all over the brain at the same time. What we're using here is a spectral analysis. And so rather than the medical model of measuring one set of frequencies under one electrode, which is the dominant frequency, where a lot of the, the brainwave biofeedback has not worked for consciousness, is that the traditional medical EEGs measure the dominant frequency, and all of the other frequencies that are happening all at once in the brain get left out. And the dominant frequency may be beta, and so you don't know that there is alpha and theta going on there at once. So the medical technology is looking at each individual tree, and this instrument is taking a scan of both, both hemispheres, sending it through spectral analysis, and looking at the forest. And that's what helps us to understand the state of consciousness. A medical EEG just looking at that one dominant frequency can't tell us anything about uh, consciousness, really, because we need to understand how the different frequencies interact. Um, I know I'm moving on, but I'm moving on. <laughs> Someone might be producing a large amount of alpha waves, and actually, in my practice, I see people who have been, for example, using a light and sound device on an alpha frequency, not using a set program, but just turning it on to alpha because they have a mistaken idea that alpha is what they need. 